Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, back here in my car. Uh, I'm going to show you some quick little ways to help keep your car stereo system lasting longer when you have, let's just say, siblings that don't respect your property when they drive it and they like to listen to the music a little too loud. Um, this car I've had since 2002. It's a 99-2000 model. I've never had any problems with any of the speakers or wiring in this car. Um, never had any problems until this year when my sisters back when I was uh, driving over the road, they used this car a lot. And well, since then it's had bad differential uh, and one of the speakers is blown. Uh, you know, the problem is, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right now in the mirror through the looking glass. <laughs> That was really corny. You know, I don't have a problem with people that are bad drivers and people that abuse their own things. Really don't have a problem. I mean, if you want to beat your own car to death, that's fine. Don't got a problem with that. Don't got a problem if you, uh, you know, want to run your car into poles or corners or do whatever you want as long as you're not endangering other people. I don't care. What really pisses me off, though, is when you give your keys to somebody else that's in the, that's in the family and they treat your car like their car. You know, I know this car is not much to look at, but it's my car and I paid for it. And right now I just can't afford insurance because of my job situation, so it's insured under my parents. And so because of that, um, they, they get to use it. And that's fine, I'm not using it all the time anyways. But my thing is when I'm in somebody else's car, I drive it and treat it like I'm driving a car from a dealership, you know, like it's, something that I'm thinking about buying but I don't own yet and that's just kind of my pet peeve so if anybody's watching this just remember that when you're borrowing somebody else's car or vehicle or anything remember it's not yours you know you might beat the living crap out of your car but don't beat the living crap out of it. even if they beat the living crap out of it don't uh, so anyways I developed a little trick and you can do this if you own a Jeep or any other car so I'm gonna show you this right now oh it's already in the ignition huh so anyways we're gonna turn the electrical system on here. I mean, of course, I can't keep them from beating the transmission up or blowing out tires or over revving the engine or anything like that. Um, but my sisters are kind of distracted drivers. So anyways, we're gonna turn the electrical system on. Now, if you notice, see everything's on, all the gauges are working. But if you notice, huh, stereo system doesn't work, you know? Get this from the iPod or the CD player because this actually doesn't work. Uh, you know, push this and the clock comes up and that's the right time, I think, anyways. And so, nothing looks like it works. Well, I'm going to show you what I did. And you can do this to, you can do this, I mean, this is this simple stuff. If, if, if you know anything about cars, you're like, yeah, I'm not, yeah, retard, we know. Uh, but this is just something that I figured out. Down there, in my car, most cars have them, all, I mean, all cars have them, uh, somewhere on the other side, but it's a fuse box. And this right here <laughs> is a fuse, obviously. And this right here is to my radio. I looked it up online, this car didn't come with a di diagram. And so every time my sisters, shh, don't tell them. But every time they drive my car, the night before I sneak out, <laughs> and I unplug this. Because the thing is, they blow up my speakers, they disrespect my car, and they're distracted drivers as it is. And I know they got their cell phones, they got everything else, but at least with this um, out of the way, they're not, because I remember, like the first time I gave her the keys yesterday, she puts it in, she turns, to, I can hear the music from the house, and as she's driving away going 45 miles an hour down our drive, she's looking down at the radio, pushing buttons, trying to figure out what stations are, you know, the ones that she likes to. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to quick show you, um, I guess, how to take these out and put them in. Most of you probably know, so you'll be like, why the hell am I watching this? But uh, I'm bored, so here we go. Uh-oh, we're gonna run out of battery here before I'm done with this video. Hopefully this gets done. All right, I'm gonna try to sneak this camera in here and show you pretty quick. So I got all this slot. Now I had to look it up, but this slot right here is for my radio. So as you can see, it's chipped. Now a lot of times they sell things in stores that can pry this out. I unfortunately don't have one of those fuse priors that they come with some new cars. So I gotta use uh, needle nose pliers. It's probably not the best thing but it works. So it goes in here, pretty simple. You know, 
bunch of them. You might have to look up your car's di uh, if your car doesn't come with a diagram. I'm missing the cover. My sister's probably lost it. Um, it comes off. I don't know where it is. That had a diagram, but it's been misplaced. Unfortunately, I need to get a new cover so this doesn't get all grimy during the winter here in Minnesota. But uh, you know, just look at the diagram. That's the one right there for the radio. And as you can see, working now. Perfect. See, everything works. Don't want to keep this on too much. But see, the problem is, I'm gonna just gonna show you this quick. Here is the normal level of volume my sisters listen to music. We'll turn it to their favorite, Cities 97. That's what they listen to it on a normal volume. I'm sorry, but I like my car stereo system a little bit too much. Uh, the other thing is, so anyways, um, so basically, uh, that's what you can do. And just, you know, you know, please remember people, if you're going to use somebody else's things, uh, whoa, zoom in. <laughs> hey, uh, don't you like my hair? Looks like I'm from like the 1970s because I'm bald. <laughs> but uh, just remember, if you're going to use somebody else's stuff, just respect it. I mean, don't treat it like your stuff. Treat it like it's brand new, and if you break it, you have to pay for it. I mean, I know my car is a piece of junk. Even I know that. But just uh, treat it respect, because another thing I'm going to have to fix is I don't have any lock brakes. And my brakes were stiff. I mean, you could barely push them in, and the car would stop. I mean, obviously, if it gets on gravel and stuff, it'll slide, and you need to learn how to pump it. I could push my brake pedal almost all the way to the floor now. I gave this car to my sister on Sunday. It is now Friday. So in less than a week, she's reduced my braking power by half. I don't even know how the hell that's possible. But just, I'm not trying to pick up my sisters. I'm just saying is that if you're going to use somebody else's stuff, respect it. Well, I hope this was informative. Like I said, I'm just kind of bored today. Um, you can leave any comments you want. Hateful, like you suck, because I know. <laughs> Anyways, I guess uh, thanks for watching, and um, yeah. <laughs>